The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to Global Ledger's Vendor Links product update. My name is Emily Anterberger, Marketing Manager with Global Ledge, and I'm pleased to be your webinar facilitator. Before we begin, allow me to orient you to the webinar function. In the lower portion of the GoToWebinar panel, you will find a question panel. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Since we are conducting a product demonstration, we will attempt to answer questions as you ask them and incorporate our responses as part of the demonstration. Next, let me welcome today's presenter. Our presenter today is Cheryl Patton. Cheryl is Global Edge's Director of Operations. Cheryl leads the team responsible for implementing the new functionality within VendorLinks. Joining Cheryl as panelists are Jason Carlson and Rick Winters. Jason is our Director of National Sales. He joins us today bringing industry knowledge of current challenges and needs organizations are facing. Jason's experience working across all industries offers a unique perspective into vendor management. Rick Winters is our Manager of Client Relations. He works closely with our clients on a daily basis to ensure their vendor onboarding needs are met. Please, let us welcome Cheryl Patton as our presenter. Thank you, Emily, for the introduction, and thank you, Rick and Jason, for participating in our demonstration today. Before we get started, let me run through our quick agenda. First, I'd like to fill you in on our background and share with you a little bit about Global Edge. From there, we'll get into a quick overview of our product offering and then head into our demonstration. We will be covering vendor registration and our client solutions gateway within VendorLinks today. These two parts of the platform are what were most impacted by the recent enhancements. First, a little bit about Global Edge. Uh, Global Edge started as an accounts payable auditing firm. While working with a large healthcare organization in the Midwest, our team recognized the need to look deeper at the vendor population. And to our advantage, a number of regulation changes have occurred when it comes to business-to-business -business transactions, requiring businesses to look deeper into the individuals and businesses that your organization interacts with on a daily basis. After identifying the need, Global Edge developed and deployed our product called VendorLinks. Within VendorLinks, we provide a vendor onboarding platform, allowing our clients to have a centralized vendor management CRM type platform to capture vendor details, verify the vendor details against public records, conduct federal sanction list checks, and IRS TIN matching. The platform also facilitates the gathering of documents your organization may require, and then stores them within the, within the platform for a centralized location and easy access. As part of the enhancements we're reviewing today, we've increased the functionality within registration to allow you to turn on and off certain registration components. In addition to vendor links, uh, Global Edge does offer two additional tools for auditing. They are our accounts payable recovery auditing, which as I mentioned earlier is where vendor links has grown out of. And then our second platform is our credit card auditing tool called Encompass. With this platform, you're able to audit every transaction for every cardholder every month. If you have questions about those two platforms that we're not covering today, let us know and we'll connect with you at a later time to cover those in detail. Now, let's get into vendor links. Here's a highlight of what we're going to be covering today. First, we'll start out with reviewing the platform your vendors will see when they're invited to register with VendorLinks. We'll be covering the standard components, but also highlighting the new ones. And then we'll head into the Client Solutions Gateway to show you how you're able to leverage the information your vendors provided, and also review how we will interact with you, your vendors and you during that process. Allow me just a moment to navigate uh, to the demonstration. And while Cheryl is getting logged into our demonstration site, we just wanted to talk high level with all of the attendees on the platform of how a vendor gets invited into uh, the vendor registration. There, for the client, there's three convenient and easy ways to do this. You have the ability to send a URL electronically to a, to a vendor to begin the registration. Uh, you have the ability to add a vendor in the Client Solutions Gateway, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, and send the electronic invitation that way. Or you can provide us your vendor master file 
and we can generate letters, uh, snail mail letters, to send to your vendors if you aren't able to send a letter internally on your own. Thanks, Rick. And as part of that invitation, once that is initiated within the vendor link platform, we'll generate a reference ID. And the reference ID is what you see I entered here. And I'll submit that. The first thing that we're going to ask is if they're already a Global Edge user or if they're new to the system. Because we have a number of clients within our platform, they may already have a profile within the platform. I'm already a user, but I did that because I started the process to make this a little bit easier so you don't have to see me fill in all of the information as we go along. So I'll get logged in here. <clears throat> The first thing that we're going to be capturing is uh, the person that's filling out the form. There are a number of steps, as you can see on the left side of the panel, which will kind of guide us or guide you to where, you're, where the vendor is at within the process. The person filling out the form is the first key piece of information that we capture from that vendor. So if they get stuck along the way, we can actually reach out to them and help them through the process. The next piece here is the business details. In the business details, we will be capturing the pieces of information that are required to complete an electronic W-9. Within our platform, we create uh, an electronic W-9, and I'll show you a sample of what that looks like here in just a moment. But with the W-9, depending on the tax classification that you select, there are a number of decisions or dynamic um, interactions here that exist to make sure that we have all of the pieces of information required so that your W-9 is accurate, which includes capturing here the federal tax ID. Throughout our process, we're going to capture the tax ID, and then we're also going to run that tax ID against the, our, the IRS to confirm that that tax ID is accurate. We're going to ask if they're a publicly traded company or if they're tax exempt, which is key parts of it, pieces of information required for the W-9. We request for them to complete the corporate physical headquarters, which means it's a street address. We don't want PO boxes. And then the next piece that we capture here is the guarantor or principal. The guarantor or principal is going to provide us key information into uh, the individual who has uh, a direct link to the business within public records. Within our authentication process, we're going to verify that the individual that they that your vendor has provided as a guarantor or principal is actually connected to that business with a public record. So we're capturing here some key information on that individual. How long have they been with the company? If they're an owner, how much or what the percentage of the ownership is there? And because I pre-filled this, the function to create the W-9 has already been done, and I'll just navigate to the W-9 to show that to you. So here's the W-9 that I generated as part of this registration process. It has all of the boxes checked that need to be checked. The tax ID is filled in the appropriate location. And I have created an electronic signature into the form. I can load an electronic signature, or we have a terms and conditions that allows you, the, the vendor, to accept and actually type the signature in there. So far, what, what I've shown you is standard in our platform or previously existed in our platform before the new enhancement. So I'm going to navigate to the next part of the registration process, which is going to be primarily our new functionality. Before I get into this next section here, are there any questions? Are there any questions that have come across it already? At this point, there isn't, <clears throat> excuse me, any questions that have came through. If you do have questions as we're going through the functionality, please, again, don't hesitate to send those through so we can pause and answer those questions. Thank you. The next piece of the registration here is customizable um, by our clients, and it's how you categorize your businesses within your organization. And then we require that your vendor complete or select um, the primary categories and the subcategories. As we go through this process, what you're going to find or what the way that it's built is the main category that we have here is going to drive the components of the rest of the registration. 
there's some pretty cool things coming up here, but remember that this main category here is going to be what drives the components of the registration. So I selected that as the vendor, I'm a laboratory type of vendor. I have these options available. As a subcategory, I selected blood, blood bank and chemistry. I have some additional questions here um, requesting if I'm a union, non-union. I can say I'm union or non-union or both. Requesting the number of employees within the organization, the year that it was established, and the company web address. Some of these, as you can see, are optional. Some of them are required. This is an optional question here where we'll capture whether or not you're a diverse supplier. So if your vendor has, provide, has indicated that they're a diverse supplier within this platform, we'll request them to define what type of diverse or minority status they have. We'll request the document ID and, ex and an expiration date. And in this situation, we require them to load a document of that certificate that aligns to this information here. And then as part of the Global Edge research process, after they've completed the registration, we're going to verify that the document that they provided actually aligns to the information that they've given us. It's amazing how often we will see uh, a handwritten note that says, I am a female and I own 52% you know, of the company. We need to have the actual certificate, and that's part of a service that we provide is verifying that exists. Cheryl, we do have a few questions coming in right now that uh, we'd like to get answered. Okay. The first question is, have you experienced vendor pushback with the level of detail and the amount of information that is required during registration? Uh, I can speak to that one. Uh, vendors haven't pushed back on the level of detail because we've tailored the vendor registration to be specific to a business and business details only. We don't look for personal information. We don't want financial information on a business. All we're looking for is for the vendor to provide us business information to create that profile within uh, the vendor solutions gateway for them and the client solutions gateway for our clients. That's an excellent question. And, and another thing to remember is as I'm going through this, based on the type of business that you're uh, requesting to have, or based on the type of business that I'm registering as here, uh, I could have a uh, I could have every single one of these components that I'm showing you today displayed, or I might have none of the additional components displayed. And you know, we're, as we go through this, you know, what we've talked through so far is union status, uh, number of employees, the, the additional documents here. We'll go through an, an additional sets here, but for the most part, these are customizable. So you are able to determine, based on your preferences and based on the type of business, what pieces of information you want to ask for. So you don't ask for all of this information from all of your suppliers. And to add to that, we do have another question as well. Uh, is additional information section in vendor registration entirely customizable, or must the customization fit the category listed? Uh, that's a great question. And we've designed this segment of the vendor registration to be customizable by client. So if you use a, a, an internal list of categories and subcategories that you use today, uh, we can work together. You provide us that list. We can have that loaded into registration so that your vendors are seeing the categories and categ um, subcategories that you, you use within your organization. This is our demonstration platform. If a client doesn't have categories and subcategories that they're using today, we do have a default list of those as well, so we can help assist that way. Sounds good, Rick. Thank you. So where we left off, oh, I was going through the minority certificate here, diverse supplier, and us making sure we've captured that information. Again, we'll verify that as part of our offering. Same with nonprofit. If they indicate that they are a nonprofit, we will require that they load a copy of their certificate there. We catch, capture the primary contact information. So earlier, we captured who is filling out the form. That might not actually be the individual that we need to engage with or you as a client need to engage with when you're going through your, your conversations or your procurement process. The next, so all of the pieces of information that I'm going to go through next 
all of this is dynamic. You're able to turn it on or turn it off. The additional guarantors information, uh, some of our organizations require that if uh, that they list or provide individuals that own more than 10% of the company. And then w once we have that information, we conduct sanction checks against the names of the information or against the names that are provided here. So I've listed myself as the president of the company here. I own 85% of that. And I'm going to say that Rick, my partner in crime here, he owns 10% of that. And I'm just going to say he lives in Idaho. When this information goes through, we will conduct a sanction check check on Rick as well. For the percent of ownership, we don't allow that to go above 100%. It needs to, needs to be under under 100%, but we don't require it to be exactly 100%. Other questions that we ask is, has there been change in control of the company in the past two years? As well as, uh, you know, are there, is the company or its owners connected with other companies, as a subsidiary or parent, holding or affiliate? That information gives us deeper insight into that business and the relationship that this organization might have with other organizations that I might be doing business with other clients. So here I said yes, I, I do, I am connected with another company which is the cleaning service and I'm the owner of that company as well. I'll move on to insurance details. Based on the type of organization, again, if you recall, this is based on the type of business. So if you're talking about a construction supplier or a transportation supplier, you're going to want to make sure that they have the appropriate level of insurance to operate within or around your facility, or if they're transporting patients or doctors or you know, other individuals within your business, you want to make sure they have the appropriate level of coverage. And so here we're capturing pieces of information that help support that. What we will require here is uh, one document to be attached because you can have one provider that has a number of different riders that go along with it. And so we require one document to be attached. So I've pre-filled this information for us already. Any additional questions come through? Uh, no additional questions at this point, but I would like to add uh, one of the things that we did with this functionality of capturing uh, insurance documents and licensing documentation is we created a notification functionality within, within the platform so that as a vendor provides a document, and if that document is set to expire uh, within 30 days, a notification will go out to the vendor letting them know that, that their document is set to expire, as well as the client has the benefit of designating who internally they would like to receive that notification to be made aware of that document also expiring. And then at the day of expiration, we'll send off a second notification letting both the vendor and client know. Our clients really like that because then it, it, it requires the vendor and creates the awareness internally for them to keep these documents up to date in the platform so that there's not a worry of anything expiring. Thank you, Rick. Um, so as, as Rick mentioned, we have the insurance documents, we have licensing information. Um, I listed myself as a certified project management professional. Um, and then we have another document here, also PMP. I could attach a copy of my certificate if I would like to. Uh, but at this point, we're just asking for the registration information. If there were specific licenses uh, to, you know, a doctor's license or a construction license or transportation licenses, all of that information could be entered here. And then as Rick mentioned earlier in our conversation, you can send out different invitations to different types of vendors. So in your communication to the vendors, you could actually indicate within the invitation what types of documentation you may be requiring for them to provide. So is there a certain level of insurance that you would like to see? Is there a certain set of licenses that you would like to see if you know that it's a construction supplier or if you know that it's a transportation supplier? So they're able to enter all of that information here. Has this individual or this organization ever been licensed uh, under a different state within, under a different license within the same state? One thing to add with that question is 
that can be customized. So if, if you reside in the state of Minnesota, uh, we can customize that to ask if they've ever been licensed in Minnesota under a different name or state. And again, this goes to our ability to take a look at that and make sure that they're not transferring from, you know, from one organization to another. So reducing your risk in doing business with an organization. The next piece here is professional organizations. Again, each of these components are optional, and we'll show you where that setting is when we get into the Client Solutions Gateway. But professional organizations, uh, if it's important for you to understand what professional organizations uh, this, this vendor uh, belongs to, we can capture that here. If there's any awards that they have been awarded within a set period of time, we can capture that here. Um, I entered that uh, Global Edge actually received an innovation award back in September of, of 2014, so I entered that here. And publications, have there been any publications that have occurred? What the publication was and the date of that publication. So the next piece that I'm going to get into I think is probably one of the more exciting um, components of the new enhancements that we have put in. And what we essentially allow is for your organization to create a set of questions based on the type of business that uh, is coming through and registering. So we've talked a little bit about construction types of vendors or doctors or transportation types of vendors. You're able to customize the question and based on then the response, is there additional information that you may require? So for example, in this situation, we have a number of different types of questions, and I'll show you those. Here is just a simple yes-no question. Has the applicant ever failed to complete a contract? Fairly basic question. Um, if I said no, I wouldn't see the, the input box here, but I said yes, and it asks for a response. So I completed a response there. The next question, if I was to change my answer to a yes, it's going to require me to input something or some piece of information there. If I scroll down just a little bit, here's another type of a question. Does the applicant have a, a drug and alcohol program or policy? If the answer to that is yes, provide a copy of the policy. So earlier, I'm requiring to fill out some text information. Here, I'm requiring a very specific document from this organization. So business associate agreements are something that has become really, really common if an individual has or an organization has gave access to personal health care information. This is where you would be able to facilitate a, a simple question to say, will your organization have access to personal health care information? If the response to that is yes, you load the business associate agreement. The next questions are sets of questions here. If we request an input or a response, a typed response, we can ask them to load a file. This right now, we're not requiring a file to be loaded, but you could require a file to be loaded based on the response. So Rick, have any questions come through at all regarding the questionnaire and the types of questions that can be set up? One question that came through is, is can the questionnaire be customized? And um, the answer to that is yes. A client can provide a questionnaire by, based on each category if they'd like. And, and when that vendor selects the questionnaire, the, or I'm sorry, that category, that questionnaire will appear on the bottom of the screen for them to answer. Uh, you in registration, or I'm sorry, in the Client Solutions Gateway, we'll, we'll see here in a minute how a client has the ability to customize and assign specific questionnaires of specific categories, uh, and so you'll, you'll be able to see that functionality and how you can control what your vendors are seeing through the process. Very good. I'm going to navigate to the next page. So the next page here is, for the most part, the final component of the registration process. And there's a couple things that I want to mention about this page. So this is capturing your remit to addresses. And the first thing that Global Edge offers is, is one, we, we understand that within a vendor master file, you can have a number of different remit to addresses. And within the vendor link platform, what we will do, if you, if you choose to do this, we will load all of your remit to addresses into our platform. And then when your vendor gets to this portion of the registration, we ask them to confirm that those remit to addresses are still active. So this allows you to kind of clean up and reduce the number of remit to addresses that you have within your 
portfolio for this vendor. And then in addition to that, we allow you to capture banking information. So if you have an electronic funds transfer or an ACH type payment offering, when your vendors come through the platform, we will capture the banking information. And Rick, based on your experience with our, with our current client structure, what's the percentage of, of vendors that you're seeing once this is offered? What is the percentage that you're seeing actually coming in and providing the banking information? That's approximately around 70% of the vendors are coming through. And, and when they know they have an opportunity to be paid electronically uh, to receive their payments faster, and obviously from the client's benefit, uh, reducing in, in, in uh, payment costs when just creating a, a general letter or a general check, uh, that they want to jump all over that benefit. Thank you. Like I said, this is the final step in the process, so I'm just going to submit through this. So here we've completed the registration. We do have uh, a fee that we charge. And so I'm just going to say I need to be invoiced for that fee. And then this will take us to a thank you page that is presented back to the vendor, thanking them for their participation, giving them a little bit of instruction. And the vendor actually has a, solution, a vendor solutions gateway. We're not going to go into that, but it's essentially a platform where they're able to go in and manage their vendor profile if their license information changes or any documents changes or W9 changes, their tax classification rate change, all of that information is can be administered within the Vendor Solutions Gateway. So we've completed this process. I'm actually going to move on. Sure, we do have a question that came through. Uh, the question is, are you able to brand this platform, as in show your company's name and logo when the vendors log in? So we, I, I would say the answer to that is yes. We do have the opportunity or the ability for you to, to load your logo. And if you look here, we have the vendor links logo here. That would just be replaced by your logo. And then on the bottom piece here, it, it is showing that it's powered by Global Edge. As Cheryl gets logged into the Client Solutions Gateway, um, we're going to go through what you as the client see when your vendors complete registration and all the information on that vendor profile. Uh, you, you know, we just reviewed categorization of vendors. You as a client have the ability, as, as your vendors come through, to search by a specific category. So maybe you want to look in your vendor population for all of your laboratory vendors. You can quickly and easily do that in the platform. Uh, a lot of times I hear from clients, you know, one of the things that occurs is an end user will request a new vendor to come through because they weren't aware of a, of a different vendor you're already using. And this solves for that by being able to allow access to your users within your organization into the platform and to search and see uh, all the laboratory vendors that you're already engaged in doing business with. And it helps reduce uh, creating additional vendors within your vendor master file that maybe aren't needed. All right. We will, thank you, Rick, we will transition to the Client Solutions Gateway. Uh, before we do that, Jason, uh, you know, I didn't give you much of a chance to make comments on the registration process. Anything that you that I may have missed throughout the process that you'd like to touch on quickly? Sure, no problem. The, uh, really, the highlight of the registration process that uh, I'll, I'll mention from the client perspective is really the customization. I know we've talked a lot about that today, but the customization is really what, uh, what really keys in the, uh, the key point for the client. Really being able to, whether it's a uh, healthcare type of organization, a manufacturing organization, um, any type of uh, municipality or educational uh, organization, it can be customized to exactly what you require and you request of your vendors. So that specific customization is really the highlight for uh, all of our clients currently. Thank you, Jason. So what we've been looking at here for the last minute or so on, on the screen is the landing page for our Client Solutions Gateway. Uh, all of our platforms, we call them Solutions Gateways. So there's a Vendor Solutions Gateway. This here is the Client Solutions Gateway. As you can see, there is a, a small dashboard. There are some quick, kind of quick reference tabs on the left. And then within the key metrics, 
we're going to list the number of vendors that you have within the platform that have been invited to come in and register with us. How many of them have been approved? How many of them have been approved from research? I'll touch on that just a little bit. Our authentication process uh, is kind of our research process where if vendors come through and our public record information or other indicators that we evaluate indicate some risk, we're going to make sure that we've gone through and ensured there's no risk with that vendor or with you doing business with that vendor. And so if we go through and do some research you're going, and we approve that vendor, you're going to see the number of vendors that we went through that exercise on. For vendors at risk, these are vendors that haven't completed the process. So we've invited them to come in and complete our registration process, and they haven't done that yet. So you have a quick dashboard to see where your vendor population is at. And then we also have a workflow, which we won't go into a lot of detail here today, but if there are vendors that are assigned to you to be worked, once you log in, you'll see what that population is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a vendor started here. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk through really quickly some of the functionality within our platform. So on our Vendors tab, here is where you can go in and do a deep search on a vendor. I'll touch on that in just a little bit. There are a number of different dynamic ways that you can search for a, a specific vendor or a list of vendors meeting certain, meeting certain criteria. And then this is where you would also add a vendor into the platform. So if you have a single vendor you need to add into the platform, you simply enter pieces of information along with an email address, and it would electronically send an invite out to the vendor to have them come in and register. Our reports section has a, a lot of different reports, allows you to look at pieces of information within your vendor profile a lot of different ways. We could spend a day going through reports. I'm just going to skip over that. Our e-business section, we allow electronic notices. So if you're paying through electronic funds transfer or ACH, you can send us your banking file and we'll send an electronic notice out to your vendors once the payments are scheduled to be sent. And then eBroadcast allows you to send electronic messages out to a group of vendors. So if you have a new policy that a, a vendor may need to be aware of or a set of vendors may need to be aware of, you can use your eBroadcast tool for that. Administration, you within this platform, you're able to set up uh, a number of different users and with each user, you can have different roles or each type of user. So if you have a procurement group that may, you may want to just be able to send invitations, you would be able to give them access to that limited tab. But if you have another group that needs access to a broader set of information, you're able to set controls uh, based on your preferences and what you believe individuals need to have access to. The profile, business details, I'm going to scan through some of this. Uh, documents in, in vendor view, those pieces of information are going to give you visibility or give your vendors visibility to your profile. Also allows you to, uh, the notification email is going to allow you to, to set up individuals or groups that notifications from the platform will go to. So as Rick mentioned earlier, if a document expires, you're going to have a, a, an individual user or you may have uh, an, a group that needs to receive that communication. That's where you would set that information. Invitations. We talked a little bit about invitations earlier. And with invitations, you can have a number of different invitations. You can set the rules. There are different questions and answers that you have within the, within the invitations. You collect banking information. Um, or I, I could go through a long list, but we're, we, I want to get to the fun part here. But with invitations, you're actually able to um, set up as many as you need. And if you invited a vendor under one set of rules, you can actually change that if they haven't come through and completed the process. I'm going to go actually go to the re registration setup page. So we've gone through the registration. This is kind of the key driver to the registration. So we've talked about the business categories and, the, and subcategories, but the key component here is the business category. These categories are going to drive the types of questions that are 
being asked of your vendors when they come through. So union status, principles, if you recall the license and insurance information, professional organizations, publications, awards, all of those are now dynamic. You can turn them off or you can turn them on based on the business category. And then I'm going to edit here for just a second. And then the questionnaires, you can have a number of different questionnaires here within this. This is just a sample a platform. I have two. I have construction and consultants, different types of questionnaires. And you can have a number of different questionnaires. This is where you would select based on that business type again, the questionnaire that you would have within your platform. Cheryl, there's a question coming in. What if what if my questionnaire changes? Can I change it at any time? So the, the questionnaire can be changed at any time. Right now we don't have it set dynamically where the questionnaire is, is something within the platform, but you would work with us to make the changes to the questionnaire. All right. I'm going to go back and bring up my vendor. I want to talk really quickly about the vendor profiles. So if you recall through the registration process, we captured a lot of information on uh, one single supplier. And what I'm going to be going through here is the type of information, the tools and functionality available to your organization when they leverage the Vendor Lake platform and how you're able to work with individual vendors within your vendor master file. So for starters, there's a number of different tabs that we have here. I'm probably going to focus on just a key, comp a key field. The, the left tab here, when you originally invite your vendor into the platform, what we're going to do is we're going to take your vendor master file, we're going to load it to vendor link, and what we're displaying here is the vendor master file detail. If you're sending your spend information along, we'll include your spend information there as well. Once the vendor begins the registration process, pieces and components of the vendor details start becoming displayed. And once it's completed, we'll update the status within the platform to reflect that that's been completed. The Global Edge Details section on the, on the right, this is essentially kind of our dashboard to kind of help us understand what type of invitation was sent, um, when's the last time that they've that we've worked the vendor or that you've worked the vendor, uh, what's the status of the registration, a number of key pieces of information for us there. And as you see, uh, based on the screen you're seeing now, under the Global Ed Details, uh, our research team uh, evaluates the information that comes back on that vendor, and when they have confirmed this vendor to be in good standings and there's no risk, we will approve that vendor. Uh, we will let you know, the client, what's the authenticated name and also the, the uh, um, EIN, I'm sorry, that matches to that, that business name. So you have the correct information coming back to you for your vendor master file to ensure you have accurate information on your vendor for 1099 reporting at the end of the year to potentially reduce those IRS fines. That's an excellent point, Rick. And as you can see, we have the, the tax ID here that was originally in your vendor master file, and, and then we have the tax ID here that was actually registered. So if you look here, this was sent through as a tax ID, but when the vendor came through the process, it's actually in a, a social security number. So when we process that, it's going to let us know and make sure that we have it set to the right uh, to the right type of tax ID. If you recall, we filled out the categories and subcategories. As a client, you were able to make modifications to those categories and subcategories. I want to talk through the bottom section of this page really quickly, though. The document details, we don't have a lot of documents here, but you can see we have the W8 or W9, and there's, a, there's an icon there that's different than the one above. Based on the system that the information came from or the user that the information came from, we have different icons. And then recent phone bill is a document that we may request as part of a research process. That has not been completed yet. If this was loaded to our platform, we would see a little check, green checkbox next to it. The risk details. As I mentioned earlier, we'll take the information that the vendor has provided. And we're going to go out to public records and gather the information, run it against, and do some comparisons against public records, and then we receive conditions back. I mentioned earlier individual to business linkage. So we take the individual's name, 
compare it to public records against this business, and we get an indicator back. In this situation, I have a little green dot here. That means that connection was appropriate. And then we also conduct sanction checks. And I'm going to go to sanction checks in just a moment. But as you can see here under the work section, you're able to set different work statuses. You can assign it to a number of different users within your platform. You can set a comment source and reason, enter comments on this individual vendor. So you're able to have documentation within your platform that allows you to kind of keep a history of your vendor. So I'm going to navigate to the sanctions check page. Any questions that have come through at all, Rick, that we need to talk through? At this point, there hasn't been any questions, no. Very good. All right. So sanction checking uh, suppliers is a requirement of this. It's a federal requirement. And within the VendorLink platform, we offer a tool that we believe is you know, above standard of, of many of the other tools that are out there. This, our sanction check page here, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sanction check your vendor master file details. And the reason we do that is that helps us kind of identify a risk profile for all of your vendors within the platform. And then once the vendor comes through and we have the actual vendor provided information, we're going to sanction check that information as well. So I am in a vendor name of Aaron Robinson, and Aaron Robinson actually have, has a, a sanction hit on it. Now the state here, you can see this Aaron Robinson is in Dallas, Texas. The, the re, reported Aaron Robinson is in New Jersey. So we have just a little bit of work there to figure out is this the same Aaron Robinson. As we go through, we can work this individual hit. So we may say that it's a false positive and be able to move on. But I might request that an attestation be submitted. So I'm going to set the status to be attestation requested. I'm moving really fast through this. And, and uh, as, we, as we get to the end of this, I, I see my time is quickly slipping away. Um, but I want to get through a few components. Um, from the sanction checking perspective, just a couple of key highlights there. Um, one, once your vendor is in our platform, we conduct a sanction check on your supplier on a daily basis. So you don't have to take your vendor master file, load it to an external provider, get the results back, try to figure out which vendors you've already conducted research on, and kind of synthesize that data. Once your vendor is in our platform, we will conduct the sanction check on a daily basis. So this, what this does is it's kind of, I don't want to say set it and forget it, but any new hits that come back, we will notify you via email that a new potential hit has come back. So we really conduct that monitoring for you. Anything on the sanctions side of things, Rick, that you would want to add? Just to reiterate, our clients really they really enjoy that they can load a vendor. They don't have to worry about receiving a duplicate hit uh, on a vendor for the same information. Uh, they entrust in the platform. It gives them a notification when that comes through. They, they can specify who they want the notifications to go to within their organization, uh, again, to, to create the awareness that there might be a potential hit on it. Thank you. I'm going to navigate over to our Documents tab. So within our registration process, we captured the W-9 document, and that you're going to see loaded here. We can open up that document from, a, from the platform. We're requesting a phone bill. We can see that that document's got loaded. I'm going to go to Custom Documents, because this is where it's going to display our insurance information and our additional certificates and the responses to the questionnaire that we've had. So here. Within the custom documents, you can see the insurance detail here, commercial general liability. We're in our test platform, so hopefully their limits are just a little bit higher than what we see there. And we can take a look at that document. As a client, then, I'm able to take a look at this document and say, they do meet the limits, the document is accurate. I can mark this document as verified. 
and now it'll show that I've verified that this document is an appropriate document for this vendor. I'm going to skip over the license and certificate section. And here's the questionnaire. So the questionnaire and the responses are all going to show up here. If I requested an additional document, that document would show up in the right panel. So I'm going to move along in the essence of time. The last piece that I wanted to cover here is the comment section. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, on the Vendor Details tab, there is a work area. All of the activity that occurs within a vendor profile, whether it's occurring uh, by the vendor within the Vendor Solutions Gateway or registration by Global Edge, as we may conduct some research on your suppliers or by you, all of that history and all that information goes into the comment section. And the, the entered by is going to show who actually completed this process. So our sanction checking process is a system level process conducted by the system. All of these other components, so this was assigned to a user, it's showing who set that up. Document expiration notifications, they're going to show up in your comments as well. So I'll navigate back to the vendor details. I know I covered a lot of information, uh, but I want to open it up and give you an opportunity to ask questions about the platform or about registration. Have there been any questions that have come through? One question that came through is what if I have multiple remit addresses for one vendor? Uh, Cheryl, if you don't mind just jumping to the address tab in the client solutions, get me real, real quick. As you recall, when Cheryl was in the vendor registration, you as the client have the ability to load all your remit addresses into registration so when that vendor is coming through, they can go through the list of what you have on file and determine what's still a valid address and what's, what's no longer valid. And if they have multiple addresses, they can still keep those on file. You'll see those here on the screen that you're seeing uh, currently on Cheryl's screen where you can go in, you can review the remit addresses, uh, some of our clients like to uh, assign a specific remit code to those addresses so that they know which address needs to be paid based on the invoice coming in. Uh, so you would have that flexibility to, to be able to manage those, excuse me, manage those uh, addresses for your vendor on your vendor. And also the vendor has the ability and the vendor solutions gateway, which we didn't get into today, to make updates and changes to those as well. One of the questions coming through as well is, does the platform allow for vendors to connect to external systems to view their payment history? So the way that we accommodate the payment history is if you're sending us the payment history within the Vendor Solutions Gateway, we have a, what we call our notice log. So it'll have a list of all of the, the payments that are out there. So if you're sending that information to us on a daily basis, we're able to load that information into the platform for the vendors to be able to log into the gateway and see that. You're also able to send notifications to the vendors that let them know that a payment is scheduled, how much the payment is for, what the invoice number is. We allow you to, if there are specific comments to that invoice, we allow you to add comments. And all of that information will go out on the notice, and it will also show up within the Vendor Solutions Gateway. And to add, you as the client have the ability to search for all all the notices that have been sent to your vendors through the platform. And the notices that go out, you decide what pieces of information you want to have sent out on the notice. You decide what the text is that goes into that notification to your suppliers. Good question. I barely touched on that, so it was a good question. Any new questions coming through? <laughs> well, yes, I'm sorry. One of the questions coming through right now is what happens if the tax ID I provided in my client details is different than what the vendor provided through registration? 
and through our research process, when we start to see discrepancies between the vendor, the client vendor information and the vendor information, is if if needed, we'll work with your vendor to understand uh, what the tax ID is that they provided versus what you have on file. Uh, through our IRS TIN matching process, we can quickly and easily see whether there's a direct match to your vendor name and the TIN they're provided and whether there's a direct match to the vendor name and the EIN they provided. If there's a discrepancy and we're seeing a mismatch, we're going to work with your vendor uh, to resolve that matter to understand what is the correct EIN that should be used to, for that vendor to be paid. And, and once the process is completed, once we've gone through all of the verification to ensure that we have the appropriate tax ID, appropriate business name and business address, we're going to send the responses back to you. So if there are any changes that need to be made to your vendor master file, you're able to load those changes into your ERP system. And the way that we tie everything together, if you look on the screen, we have a vendor ID here. This is your, your vendor ID from your ERP system that you'll send to us at the time that we load your master file into the platform. There's another question coming through here. Is there a location to identify the payment terms? Uh, if I'm understanding the question correctly, if you are interested and you do have questions around pricing and, and the fees related to this, uh, let's take that offline. We'll definitely connect with you. Uh, and, and discuss that further. And if I interpret that question, I might interpret it just a little bit differently. I would interpret it as um, the individual asking if they have specific set payment terms with their suppliers, if there is a place for them to populate that information. So we, we don't have a specific place to populate that information today, but you know, let, give us the opportunity to uh, understand a little bit more of how you would expect that to function and uh, we're not afraid to, to build uh, something new. So uh, certainly give us the opportunity to. Another question coming through regarding the sanction screening that we perform is what happens when a company name hits on a sanction list? Is there further research? Uh, today, when a, when a hit is returned on a, on a vendor name and or the guarantor information or principal information, we provide you with that information. Um, if you go out to the uh, OFAC websites and some of the government-based websites, they say it's on the client to um, confirm whether it's a match, a confirmed hit, or not. Uh, we can provide a recommendation and some insight, uh, but generally we just provide you the information uh, and then we'll assist if we can in, in helping with any questions you may have. So in lieu of more questions coming through, um, you know, I, I just want to kind of review what we have gone through. We've, we've really covered a lot. And you know, quite honestly, there are a number of places that we, we could have gone much, much deeper. And I know some of the questions that are coming through are having us go deeper into some of the components. Um, let, let's review really quickly what we did. So we started out within registration and gathering the key pieces of business details from your vendors. Uh, we then went through our new functionality, which included customizable questions. And so what I think is the coolest part of the, enhance, the enhancement um, is the fact that you can customize the questions um, and, and make them dynamic by the type of business that uh, you're operating with. Then we, re we reviewed just a small portion of the Client Solutions Gateway. If, if you saw me navigating through the tabs, you know, we barely touched on um, the primary tabs and, and we touched on a few of the vendor level tabs, um, but giving you an opportunity to see how all of the activity that occurs within our VendorLink platform is tracked and you have visibility to it. So let's, let's just take a few moments, make sure we have all the questions answered. Uh, anything you come through, Rick? One of the questions coming through is what types of risks do you identify with vendors? Um, there's, there's a lot of areas of risk and exposure that we do identify with vendors. Um, just to kind of real high level uh, touch on that, uh, one thing that we can easily uh, um, identify just with the information the vendor provides is whether or not the address they provide on file is vacant, is valid, whether it's a UPS location. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of address integrity checks that we can do on a vendor. 
uh, if, if a vendor hasn't filed any taxes in the last three years, we get results and information back on that. Um, you know, so through the, the risk condition code that Cheryl touched on earlier, uh, we're able to identify whether or not it's a valid business entity. Um, you know, the age of a business when a vendor comes through and lets us know how, how long they've been incorporated, uh, that, that suggests risk. The vendors that are new, uh, new mature or uh, immature vendor vendors are, are vendors that potentially suggest more risk than a long-term or long-standing vendor. In addition to that, based on the information that's provided, we, we have actually identified some potential conflict of interest where we actually have employees coming through um, registering as a vendor, but they also work for the organization that's coming through. So generally, they have signed an agreement or a form that says that I'm able to operate as a supplier at the same time as operating as an employee, but there are times where they're coming through and that's not always the case. So identifying potential conflicts of interest is part of what we do as well. So Rick, is there anything from your perspective that you'd like to add to what we've talked about? I don't think so. All right. Jason, anything I made a miss that you'd want to speak to? I, no, I think that uh, covered everything. I just wanted to uh, just make a give a little credit to our current client base, who that is uh, most of the uh, recommendations and suggestions on this uh, latest uh, uh, release was definitely in uh, direct give direct credit to the feedback and uh, the responses back from our current client base. They've given us a lot of assistance on what they what they want. So. That's an excellent point, Jason. You know, as, as you look at this, there's a lot of influence um, by our clients coming into the platform. And as you know, we bring on new clients, if there's some new things that, that come up, we, we certainly look at the opportunity to make enhancements to our platform to accommodate those business needs. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. I, I personally want to thank everyone who has joined us today. It, it was nice to see the great turnout. Um, as, as you may have noticed, uh, at, we at Global Edge do have a little bit of passion in what we do, and it's exciting for us to be able to share that with you. Following this webinar, uh, we will send a short follow-up email with instructions on how to contact us and a short survey. If you have just a few seconds, I would appreciate you providing your feedback so we can continue to improve what we do here. I, I think that covers it for now. So at this time, we will be ending our webinar presentation. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.